In this presentation, we will calculate the federal income tax FIT using tax tables. For more accounting information and accounting courses, visit our website at accountinginstruction.info. This is going to be our example set of data. We're looking at the payroll register, focusing in mainly on Bill Smith. Bill Smith, who is an employee, worked 40 hours at 17 uh, rate for a regular pay of 680, three hours overtime, overtime rate 2550 for overtime pay, 7650. Total earnings then uh, 75650. We're focusing here on the calculation of FIT, federal income tax. Remember, that's not our federal income tax as the employers, but the employee's federal income tax, which is reported on the employee's 1040 at the end of the year, however, is something that we need to calculate throughout the year, take out of their paycheck as the employer uh, in accordance to comply with the law. So that's what we're doing here. We're going to remove federal income tax in an attempt to uh, match how much is going to be taken out so that when they do the 1040 at the end of the year, uh, it will have already been removed. And um, so that's what we're going to do. First, we need to know what the FIT wages are, which could differ than total wages. So total wages is here. Was that 756.50? It's going to be reduced by those things that are on the 1040, for example, typically uh, re reduced for gross pay or adjusted gross income, things like retirement plans and um, the cafeteria plan. So we're going to take those out of FIT so that we can then calculate FIT using the tables. Also note that the federal income tax, when we say federal income tax, it's not the employer's taxes that we pay on our um, tax return, meaning a corporation pays federal income tax, a partnership pays it on a flow through, uh, so does a sole proprietor. However, those are on net income and we're paying the federal income tax for the employees that the employees in essence owe and will ultimately report on their 1040. So to get the federal income tax wages, we're going to start with the 756.50, and then we'll subtract from it the cafeteria plan. So we first need to know that. So we got to get the cafeteria plan and the retirement plan. So these, these numbers, we gave these numbers here. And so that's going to be the uh, 756.5 minus the 250 minus the 35 would give us the 471.50. So we're looking 471.50 is going to be our actual FIT wages. And then we're not focused so much on the second employee, but if Pam had 280 and 185, same type of thing. We're going to say 3653.85 minus the 280 minus the 185 gives us 3188.85. 3188. 85. So these are the numbers we're then going to use to look up our tables. Now that we have these numbers, we can go to our tables and look this up. Now, and there's the totals here. So if we go to our tables, they look like this. And uh, we're, we're focusing in here on uh, this, this first FIT wages and looking this number up in the table. It's important to note that we get the right table. Uh, we have to, if we go through the circular E to find this, and you can go on to the irs.gov website and find it, the current uh, circular E, whatever the current time period is, and then go to the brackets and find the correct tables. There's going to be a ton of tables because uh, they're going to have to have a different table for pay periods. So we'll need to know uh, when the pay period is. Ours, we're going to say, is weekly in this case. Could be bi-weekly, could be semi-monthly, could be monthly. Uh, just make sure not to mix up semi-monthly and bi-weekly. They're different. <laughs> so you want to pick up the right, uh, the right table there. And uh, then we need to know if the person is uh, single or married. So again, there's going to be two separate tables for each pay period based on single or married. And note all this complexity is basically because of the complexity of calculating the tax. Um, it's, a, it's a progressive tax system, so we have to somehow figure out uh, how, what the tax brackets do, and one way to do that is with the tables. Clearly, uh, it's a lot easier to have software that will automatically look up this information for us, but it's still important to kind of look this up and try to figure out why the tables are this way so that we can understand it, and if we do any tax planning, it's important for us to have some concept of, of what's going on here. So we're going to look for this 141 within these two sets and then find the number of exemptions here. 
which for Bill is 1. So we're going to say that uh, it's going to be between the 470 and the 480. It's right in between here. And that's going to be the exemptions 1 will get us to this 300 or this $35. So on this one paycheck, we're going to withhold $35. Also note that if it was on the 470, like if notice 470 is here twice, so you might say, well, should we pick the 34 or the 35? Typically, we'll pick the higher number, and that's kind of like a conservative type estimate. We want to estimate on withholding too much than too little. We would rather have our employee get a bigger withholding or bigger return on their 1040 at the end of the year than paying, because that's probably more likely to cause us problems. So typically, we'll withhold more than less. You might ask, well, this is kind of complicated. What if I picked up the wrong number, uh, it, which is possible, like if, if we were doing this by hand, if we picked up the wrong number. It would kind of wash itself out at the end, the FIT. It kind of works itself out in a way because when we do the 1040, we'll have the, we'll have the total withholdings that will match up to what the actual tax calculation was based on our 1040. And if we withheld too much, then we'll get a more of a refund. If we withheld it too little, then we'll owe money. And uh, so that's going to, we want it to be right on target because we want to give our employees as much money as they can in their paycheck. Or if we are the employee, we're trying to calculate our payroll to get as much as we can in our paycheck and not owe any money at the end of the year. Getting a refund is not the objective. The objective is to not pay penalties and interest at the end of the year. And if we end up owing a lot of money, we could then end up paying interest and penalties. Um, otherwise, we would it would be better for us to actually not pay until the end of the year because then we get to hold on to our money longer and invest it and, and, and possibly make money on it. So that's why that's why we have to do the withholdings. The IRS wants their money sooner, and therefore we have to do these withholdings and get the money to them uh, as the time passes. So this is going to be the 35 then, and so we're going to put that into our information here. So we have the FIT, and we're going to withhold the $35 from the FIT on our table. For more accounting information and accounting courses, visit our website at accountinginstruction.info.